Hey you guys, it's Dana and it's Tuesday, so it's time to talk about money. And today I wanted to share with you the four rules that I have for my kids regarding marriage or that I'm going to suggest to my kids, the four rules of marriage. My husband and I have been married almost 14 years. We're approaching our 14 year anniversary and we've been together 16 years and marriage is not easy. It's not easy. Uh, maybe it is for some people, I don't know, but uh, I think that most couples struggle along the way at some point in their marriage uh, with different things. And so there are four rules that I think my children should follow. And we did, my husband and I, for the most part, we did um, these four rules. And in order to have a successful marriage, I think that they are vitally important, vitally important. And if you look up the top reasons people get divorced, um, then you can see it's important to follow these rules. All right, so let me share with them first with you. All right, so number one is to be in agreement about religion. I think that it's important to talk about religion, um, what kind of faith, if you're even going to have a faith walk together, where, you know, whether what kind of um, church you're going to join, not join, how often you're going to attend church. Religion is so important because if you disagree on that, if one of you feels very strongly in your faith and the other doesn't, then you might be, you might have fighting. And then once children come along, how often should your kids go to church? Religion. Speaking of kids, number two is kids. You have to be in agreement about how many children you're gonna have, how you're gonna raise those kids. Um, it's very important. If you want 10 kids and your partner wants one, that's gonna be a big problem in the marriage. Number three is in-laws and how to deal with your in-laws. So again, you know, how often are you going to see your in-laws? Uh, how involved are your in-laws gonna be? Are you gonna live next door to them? Are they gonna be over every night for dinner? Do you expect to have dinner with them every Sunday, whatever day it is of the week? It's really important to talk about in-laws, your, your family traditions, over holidays. You know, are you gonna expect to always be, you know, with your aunt? Uh, I don't know, whoever <laughs> over Easter to, or, you know, whatever you're going to do, like there's just certain things that you just really love to do or your partner loves to do with your family. You have to talk about it and be in agreement. And then number four is money. Of course, number four is your finances, money. You have to be in agreement about that. And this is, this is a big deal. I think it's incredibly important because the number two reason on a lot of lists for why people get divorced is finances. Number one is often communication. That's why people get divorced. Um, and if you want to have a successful marriage, you have to look at why marriages fail, right? Because if you don't know, if you know, if you can study why they fail, then you can try to take steps to to not make that a problem in your marriage so that you can win in your in your partnership. So number one is communication a lot of times, and then number two is money. And I think that they kind of go hand in hand, and if you can work on your money issues, a lot of times it'll help improve your communication, right? So money meaning that you talk about how you're spending your money, right? How, how, what you're gonna spend money on, what your goals are financially, if you're you know, looking to build retirement or build wealth or um, you wanna give and what charities you wanna give to, if you're gonna be tithing, and then um, how much you each make. I mean, I think this is crazy to me that a lot of people don't even talk about that before they get married, what your salaries are, and then combine your two incomes together. So it's not your money, my money. It's not I make more money, so I get to spend more, more I get to spend more money than you do. Or, you know, if, if you don't combine finances, in my mind, then you're not really a family. In order to become a family unit, then you combine your finances, everything is ours, it's we, it's not mine and yours. And it might seem like, especially in the beginning when you first get married, like we can totally keep it separate, it is mine and yours, no big deal. But when you get married, the idea is that you are married for life. And that's a 
that's a freaking long time. If you live all the way up to your 80s, 90s, hopefully hundreds, um, that's a long time you're going to be with this person and they are your family. And so you're going to end up spending more time with this person than with your mom and dad, right? Or, you know, so they're, they're your family. So you combine it. There's no mine and yours. It's, it's ours. It's our money. And you put it all together and then you decide as a couple how you're going to spend your money. And then, you know, so these things are, like I said, you have to talk about it and be in agreement on it before, I think, before you get married because you don't have to be debt free before you get married. But if you are with someone who is not interested in becoming debt free and you are, then that's a big deal. It's a really big deal and it could be a deal breaker. But if you're with someone who is completely on board and feeling, you know, as if they are remorseful for the debt that they've acquired and they want to get it out of their lives, they're really invested in working hard to get rid of it, then it's cool. You can get married. But then again, you're on the same page. You guys are in agreement on what's going to be happening moving forward. So it's not about what happened in the past. It's about what's going to be occurring in the future, in your future together as a couple moving ahead. And as long as you're moving in the same direction on the same path, then you'll be able to continue moving throughout your life and have a strong, healthy marriage. But if you are not and you're going on in separate ways, separate paths, doing different things, you're just that you're just going to get further and further apart. And then most likely your marriage will not survive. And that is heartbreaking. It's really a difficult thing to go through divorce, especially if you have children. I don't think I would ever wish that on even my my worst enemy. I think divorce is really, really painful. Not having go, going through it myself, but I had to see my parents go through it. And as a child of divorce, I know how that feels. And um, I... I think that it's something that we should all try to avoid if we can. I hope, I don't know, maybe some people do go into marriage thinking of divorce, which would be a shame. But before getting married, I think if you can be in, in agreement on these four things, then you'll have a much higher likelihood of success in your marriage. You know, I have given um, finance books to people as a wedding gift and had people look at me like I was just really weird. And I don't understand that. And I've told people that Dave Ramsey essentially helped to save my own marriage by helping to teach us how to communicate together and be on the same page and have a budget and talk about money. And also people look at me like I have three heads, which I think is bizarre because... I mean, money is one of those main reasons people get divorced. And uh, it's it's something that's important. I think just so important. So, But um, like I said, if you know what the top reasons are for divorce, why wouldn't you study hard and do everything you can to make sure that you've got that down and so that your marriage will last and be healthy, right? Okay, so that's it. If you have any other rules that you yourself have followed or you would like your children to follow when they get married, leave those down below. Um, I'm sure everybody would be very interested to read it. I know I would. I always think it's interesting. Uh, marriage is a constant work in progress, in my opinion. It's something that both partners have to constantly be vigilant about as far as nurturing and trying to work together and and trying that's the key word trying to make things work make things better to be kind to each other there's always differences with everybody because we're everyone we're different people on the planet and everybody has uh, different experiences different background that they're coming from uh diff so differences but we can still be together as long as we're respectful of each other, kind, and continue to try to work on it. All right? If it's your first time here, I'm here every single Tuesday talking all about money. We're a family of six living in the Philadelphia area. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week. Bye, guys.